Today, I'm going to talk about our paper, Deep Learning Models for Global Coordinate Transformations that Linearize PDEs. This appeared in the European Journal of Applied Mathematics. Um, I'm Craig Jin, and this is joint work with uh, Bethany Lush, Steve Grunton, and Nathan Kutz. So uh, our goal with this work is to try to create um, a method that can be used to discover coordinate transformations that linearize PDEs. So sort of the general framework here is we're going to take some function u that's governed by a nonlinear PDE, and we're going to feed it through some coordinate transformation to get a new function v, uh, where v is governed by a linear PDE. Okay, so why do we want to do this? Because we already have many techniques that are already established for linear PDEs. So for example, you can do things like estimation, control, and uncertainty quantification for linear PDEs. So we can use all of these established methods um, in, the, you know, in the linear case. All right, and in particular, we also often know how to solve linear PDEs exactly. We can write down exact solutions, or we can use eigenfunction expansions, things like that. So it's easy to um, evolve this, this uh, function v forward in time using the linear PDE. And then if we have an invertible coordinate transformation, then we can actually go back and recover u at this, um, you know, this time in the future, so at t plus delta t. So this gives us a method for evolving um, our solution to our nonlinear PDE by going through this linear space. Okay, so one question you might have is, um, if you have a nonlinear PDE, how do we know whether there is a transformation that will linearize it? Well, here uh, we can appeal to Koopman theory. So I'll just give a, a very brief introduction. So let's say that we have a discrete time dynamical system where our state variable here is u. Um, so in our case, this is just going to be a discretized PDE. Well, the Koopman operator, k, it doesn't act on the state variable itself, but on the space of observables or functions of u. And it's just the composition operator. All right, and um, importantly for us, the Koopman operator is linear. All right, and what happens on some trajectory of our dynamical system? Well, if you apply the Koopman operator to um, some observable um, at UK, um, well, just by definition, um, you're going to get the observable G at UK plus one at some later time. Okay, so if you just change some notation a little bit from this line, what we get is um, VK plus one equals our Koopman operator applied to VK. So if you compare the bottom and the top, we went from some discrete time dynamical system that is maybe nonlinear, and it's, we ended up with some uh, discrete time dynamical system that's linear. All right, so this is the mathematical framework um, that we're going to be using. Um, but in practice, uh, we mostly don't know how to actually find this operator and know what these linear dynamics look like. Um, there are a few notable exceptions. So one of them is the Kohl-Hoff transformation, which linearizes Berger's equation. And then the other one is the inverse scattering transform, um, which um, linearizes a class of completely integrable PDEs, uh, like KDV or nonlinear Schrodinger. All right, so those are some examples, really the only examples where we, we know how to linearize some PDEs. Um, so to develop our method, we actually started with one of those to use sort of as an example to, to figure out the methodology. So uh, we're going to start with the example of Berger's equation. So if you take viscous Berger's equation, um, and u is a solution of viscous Berger's equation, we can apply the Kohl-Hoff transformation to get v, um, and v then will satisfy the heat equation, which is great news because we know all about the heat equation. Uh, in particular, we can write down exact solutions to it. We know exactly what the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions are. Um, one thing I'll point out is that you can diagonalize it with the Fourier transform. Um, and you know, once you've diagonalized, then moving forward in time is as simple as just multiplication. You multiply the eigenfunctions by some eigenvalues, and you can move forward in time, you know, some small time step delta t. And then if we want to move back to our, you know, our original system, Berger's equation, you can just invert the Kohl-Hoff transformation. All right, so this is what we want to try to do. And uh, the way we're going to try to do it is using deep learning to learn this transformation and to learn the linear dynamics. All right, so here's our network architecture. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, some solution to our equation, in this case, you know, as an example, Berger's equation. And the initial condition, we discretize it, and that's the input to our neural network. Okay, and then for our neural network, we have this autoencoder architecture, where we have an encoder here in yellow, and then on the far side there is the decoder. And uh, well, that's going to do our linearizing transformation and the inversion for the decoder. And then uh, when we're in this linear space, um, then we can evolve our system forward in time just using a linear operator. And that means, you know, since we're in a discrete setting, it's just ma multiplication by a matrix, right? So we have some matrix that we multiply by and that moves our system forward in time. 
OK, so an important thing is that we actually take our encoder and decoder and we split them into two parts. So let's just look at the encoder here. Um, the first part, uh, this first block here, we call this the outer encoder. And that's what's actually going to do the linearizing transformation for us. Um, so we'll have some neural network here. And uh, one important thing about our architecture is that we have this skip connection from the input to the output of the outer encoder. Um, and that is, um, I guess, sort of inspired by residual neural networks. This is a residual neural network architecture. So we just take uh, the identity times the input and add that to the output. Um, and this is inspired by physics, where we can think of transformations as being perturbations of the identity transformation, so a, a near identity transformation, um, which may sound trivial, but actually trying to learn the identity transformation with a nonlinear neural network is uh, actually a difficult task. So we sort of hard code in the identity um, and learn the residual of that. And then uh, what's the inner encoder doing if the outer encoder is doing the linearizing transformation? Well, uh, the inner encoder is actually just a linear layer, and it can do dimensionality reduction. So if you want to have a reduced order model, you can you know, sort of squeeze down to a lower dimension than your inputs. Um, and also, you could choose for your dynamics uh, matrix to be a diagonal matrix. And in that case, um, this is going to do diagonalization for you. All right, and then for the decoder, we have everything the same on the other side that's just going to invert everything for us. So if we want to go back to Berger's equation and think about what this all means in terms of our example, uh, you could think of this outer encoder as doing something like a Kohl-Hoff. Uh, this inner encoder is doing something like a Fourier transform, where if you want to reduce dimensionality, you throw away some Fourier modes. And then uh, we have like an inverse to the Fourier transform and the Kohl-Hoff in our decoder. OK, so if you want to do multi-step prediction, um, all you have to do is you just encode uh, once, and then you can step forward multiple steps in time in your linear space, and then you decode once, as opposed to sending things through the entire network multiple times. You do all of your dynamics you know, multiple steps in the future in this, this latent space. OK, so uh, one uh, thing about this, this methodology is that if you look at the, the outer encoder and the outer decoder on the far side, um, the actual network architecture there is very flexible. You can, you can use all different types of network architectures um, to, to find what works for your particular system. For Berger's equation, we just chose something very simple there. Uh, we just did fully connected uh, layers uh, with you know, four hidden layers. So uh, a really simple neural network for Berger's equation, and, and it worked quite well. So uh, one more thing we need to handle is uh, a loss function for training our network. So our loss function is actually the sum of five different loss functions. So we have three... Um, unsupervised loss functions. We want um, we have an autoencoder loss function, um, and then we also want our outer encoder and decoder to form an autoencoder as well as the inner ones. So we have three autoencoder loss functions. Uh, we also have a prediction loss function, um, which is now we're getting into the supervised ones, where basically our network prediction should match up with you know the true solutions of the PDE. And then we have uh, our last loss function we call the linearity loss function, where if you take some um, some solution and feed it through the encoder and then march forward in time. That should be the same as if you take a solution later in time and just feed it through the encoder. Okay, so um, our training data for Berger's equation, we just numerically solved Berger's equation a bunch of times um, with some spatial discretization and time discretization. Uh, we chose um, three different types of initial conditions for our training data. So we have some randomly generated white noise. We also had initial conditions that were sine waves with different frequencies and amplitudes, and then also uh, square waves uh, with different heights and, and widths. And to show some results, um, here in the first column are some exact solutions from our you know, withheld test data, and then the network predictions over on the right. And you can see really good agreement in terms of the, you know, the general dynamics of the system for Berger's equation. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that these top three examples are actually all the types of initial conditions that are in the training data, so uh, white noise, sine waves, and square waves. But if you look at the bottom two examples, those are actually uh, nothing like the training data. So we have a Gaussian and a triangle wave. And still, with these new initial conditions, our network is able to reproduce the dynamics. So if we were only able to linearize Berger's equation with our method, that wouldn't be so great, because we already know how to do that with the, the Kohlhoff transformation. So we wanted to extend it and you know, actually test it out on a system where we don't know how to linearize. And we chose uh, the KS equation, uh, which is shown here. 
Um, so as a reminder, this is like the, the network architecture. And I, as I mentioned before, this outer encoder and the outer decoder on the other side can actually have any architecture that you want. So for KS to just show uh, you know, a different option, we, we did a convolutional neural network architecture with convolutional and average pooling layers. And uh, the results, again, are, are very good. This is actually some results where we did some you know, reduced order modeling. So we, we did some dimensionality reduction in the middle. And you can see um, you know, sort of comparing qualitatively the network outputs with the exact solution. We do reproduce the dynamics of, of the KS equation. All right, so what we did is we developed this deep autoencoder architecture that can learn transformations to linearize PDEs. Um, highlights of the method, it's, it's completely data driven. Um, we have an interpretable neural network. Um, it's, uh, our transformations are global, so they work for different initial conditions, but also generalizable to different types of PDEs. Um, we did have to have um, just the right ingredients in our training procedure to get good results. Um, so the things that were important, we needed to have judiciously chosen data uh, with you know, a variety of initial conditions to be able to generalize to other types of initial conditions. We also um, needed the right neural network architecture. So we took advantage of autoencoders to get invertible transformations and also a residual neural network architecture with those skip connections. Um, and last, we needed the right loss functions to get the properties that we wanted in our network. So there are, are plenty more details and I would, um, I guess, refer you to our paper for those. And I thank you for listening.